Okay, it's question and answer time. Who has a question? Yes. Um, I have a hard time pausing after I tell the punchline. Yeah, that's, boy, that's a, uh, pausing after the punchline is huge. Um, it's weird to me, I mean, uh, to me as, as a teacher that you, you pay a bunch of money to me to be in the class. You, you go through all this, this, uh, 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 anxiety, uh, psychological anxiety that you have to, in order to do this because it's terrifying. You work for hours on the show, designing this whole show. You rehearse, you know, you do a template, you, you, you do all that work. And then when you get on stage and, and get a huge laugh, you ignore it. <laughs> I, I never quite get that. You know, you all that work, and then they're laughing, and you're busy going on to the next joke instead of kind of going, ha, ha. So the first thing is you have to be present. Uh, and there's a lot of, you're, we've gone over this before, that the rehearsal process helps you be present because you're going to be telling a story with pictures, sounds, and feelings rather than memorized words in internal dialogue. And so, so it doesn't matter in any way you want to look at it. You've got to practice putting that pause in there. That's the other reason we put the reveal at the end of the joke, so that the also gives you a cue that that's the place you need to pause. Now, it's not just, it is about the laughter and pausing for the entire laughter and the timing of peak two, three, four, then talk again. That's all part of it. But there's another reason that maybe helps you to understand why you need to do it. I have, I'm part of the International Society of Humor Studies, the World, World uh, Humor Conference, and I have seen MRIs mm. of brains dealing with jokes. And the brain goes through, in order to get the setup and the punch, it goes through four different hemispheres, different places in the brain. Okay? So you get the setup, and then they have to get a first story in their head, a picture, until that all makes sense. And once they make sense, they go, oh, that's true. Right? Then you give them the punch, and they go, oh, there's an incongruity. There's, there's something wrong. There's, that doesn't really match. Then it's got to go back into the setup, to figure out what in there had a double meaning or a different function. You know, once it resolves all that, then it goes over to the emotional center, and by then the person finds it to have humor in it, then they laugh. You have to pause for human processing. Some audiences process really fast. I've had audiences that process together kind of a little slower. So it, I'm just trying to get you to understand another reason that it's not just, oh, I'm pausing now for the laugh. It's being present to notice how long does it take this group of people to kind of process before the laugh comes out to you. Okay? And then the timing of letting them laugh, start to come back down, and then go to the next thing because they have to process both the setup and the punch and the incongruity, and that takes some time for them to go through in order to get the laugh. And that's just one more reason other than just the laugh for you to, to practice taking that pause.